especially on a long weekend. So I'm here today, you know, I'm Shanti Bhattaraman, I'm the CEO of Children's Innovation Center. I'm very passionate about research, sustainable innovation, transformative education, and I do have some wealth of um, experience from the industry as well. I can assure you that you will take away with something valuable today, okay? Um, today I'm here to talk about the future of scientific discoveries. And I'd like to share some insights about that with you. Um, before I dive into it, how many of you use technology to connect with family and friends? Mm -hmm. Raise your hands. Mm -hmm. Pretty much everybody, right? So technology has certainly changed our lives, hasn't it? We are living in a time where we are experiencing increase in technology and we are experiencing increase in scientific productivity. And some examples of that we saw during the COVID-19 time, fast uh, development of the COVID-19 vaccine, and we are also seeing how AI is being integrated into pretty much everything, right? It's going to impact all aspects of our lives. So with this much increase in technology, and increase in scientific productivity, it's kind of hard to say, are new ideas increasing or is it decreasing? What do you think? Do you think new ideas are increasing? If yes, raise your hands. Okay? Most of you think that new ideas are increasing. A recent study which analyzed 45 million research papers and 3.9 million patents over a period of 16 years has revealed a serious decline in new ideas across all the fields. And you can see this is a very serious concern. What the study found was there was increasing references for existing ideas and very few words that would refer to creation of a new paradigm. So this is a serious concern. Can we go back? So this is a very serious concern because this will slow down innovation. So we need to Right now, take it very seriously. This decline is a serious issue. We need to take it seriously. And we need to see, don't you think it's time to reverse the strength? Yes. Yeah. So, here's a news clip, a snippet from Bloomberg Business News. Disruption will always be capitalism's secret sauce. However, we will see many people overuse and oversell disruption, you know the word. But however, disruption is still the, the key for economic efficiency and without it, most of the innovations would not even happen. Okay? But we know now that disruptive science is needed and we saw the decline, serious decline. But whenever I talk about disruptive science and disruptive thinking, I immediately face with a backlash. People say, oh no, no more disruption, the world is a mess. No more disruption. And I usually, you know, after that take, it takes me at least 30 minutes to just calm them down. So, and this has happened so often, I soon realize that people are afraid of bold new ideas. So people go to great extent trying to maintain the fear of failure. So they would, you would hear things like, oh, that won't work. Or if you try this, you're going to fall flat on your face. You know, they maintain that fear. They want you to be scared. But, you know, the fear of failure prevents someone from even trying to think bold. So we need to change this. Thomas Edison said, I have not failed. I just found 10,000 ways that won't work. So it's how we look at failure, right? So if, you, if something you do doesn't work the way you want, you can look at it, oh, it's a total failure, or you can say, I will look at it, let me learn from that, and try again. See, we as a society, 
We need to allow people to think freely and boldly. We need to allow people to not be scared to question the status quo or even challenge the experts. So we need to mainly ensure that it's okay to try something several times. So we need to, with an open mind, right? Now let's see what is disruptive science. Disruption in science is nothing but scientific research that carves out new directions for scientific inquiry. See, it's not that hard, scary, isn't it? So, we are, I don't know why we are so scared of all new ideas. The pursuit for new discoveries and new ideas must never stop, okay? So, we need to continue it. But how do we gain our knowledge? Our education system is so compartmentalized. Everything is compartmentalized, right? Boundaries, subject boundaries. And if we go into higher education, it becomes even narrow and narrow with the so-called specialization. We go narrow, we go deeper and deeper into pretty much lesser and lesser, right? So we are going deep. So this has, no doubt, allowed our society to progress this far, right? But it has only allowed incremental changes in those small areas. But real world problems don't conform to subject lines. They go across the subject areas. So, we need to encourage interdisciplinary studies. You can be a specialist in an area, but you need to go and expand your interdisciplinary knowledge. We need to expand and encourage more interdisciplinary studies. Only then you will be ready to address the current real world problems. You're all familiar with the scientific method, right? How do we teach science? We learn the facts, we see how to apply it, and then we test it. We put so much emphasis on experimentation, right? Go back, please. So we put so much emph emphasis on experimentation. So, we forget that there is a step above. There is a theory above. We don't teach how to develop new theories. We, we pride ourselves on expensive labs and lab e equipment. Many times I have seen people use the word science and experimentation synonymously. See, science is not just experimentation. We need to bring back the theory development in science. Albert Einstein said, a theory can be proved by an experiment, but there is no path backwards, right, to the birth of a theory. So we need to bring back the importance of theory development. That is very critical. Progress in science depends upon learning new techniques and applying those new techniques to create, to find new discoveries and new ideas. See, for more than 15 years now, I've been developing models and frameworks to teach these new techniques and to um, help people, you know, to, to bring new discoveries and new ideas. Every business across every field are desperate for new ideas, isn't it? Everywhere you go, we want new ideas. So where do we get new ideas from? How do we get new ideas? When do we get started? If you don't know how, observe the natural phenomena. Observe phenomena in nature. It will show you, they will show you clear answers, give you clear answers, and give you the inspiration as well says Nikola Tesla, one of my favorite scientists. So we need to learn from nature. If you have paid close attention to existing theories, 
And, and if you look closely, what was the inspiration that the scientists proposed this theory? You will find most of the time that that inspiration comes from the natural world. So we need to learn from nature. Biomimicry is an approach to innovation where we seek sustainable solutions to human challenges by emulating, copying nature's time-tested patterns and strategies. So what does nature's time-tested patterns and strategies mean? It means that, you know, see life on this planet has been there for 3.8 billion years, okay? So everything on this planet has gone through a lot of adaptations and evolution for billions of years. And you know that we cannot make the first product the best, right? So it goes through a trial and error process. We learn from the mistakes, we make improvements for the next version, and then we improvise every version, it gets better and better. But do we have billions of years to perfect our product? We are all short of time. Every company wants to get a product out within a very short time. So we are pressed for time. So then, how do we create a really good product within a short time? You know, nature has perfected strategies. It has done the R&D for us. All we need to know is how to make that observation and be able to extract the strategy from the observations to apply it to what we do. Time tested patterns and strategies. What is the advantage of doing that? That means that your first product itself, the first version itself, will be far more efficient. So that will reduce the time that you need for the trial and error process. So it saves a lot of time and money. And most importantly, you have known how to solve this problem in a sustainable manner. See, it's a win-win situation. So Albert Einstein said that we still do not know even one thousand of one percent of what nature has revealed to us. Okay? So there is so much more in nature yet to be discovered. So start with insights. The clicker is not working, guys, okay? So I have to pretend it's working. Okay. So um, Status Insights is an organization that identifies impactful organizations and they recognize them, okay? So they looked at 1.379 million startups and scale-ups globally, okay, in the field of artificial intelligence and they were able to identify only 78 of them that were most impactful. Out of that 78, the top five were utilizing swarm intelligence. Swarm intelligence is the next generation of artificial intelligence. So, and it is coming from these new techniques that I spoke about. Progress in science is now dependent on a few people with vision. So it shouldn't be that way. All of you are capable. But you need to learn these new techniques. You can make these discoveries and you can create innovative and sustainable solutions. But first, you need to stand out. See, people have this herd-like mentality, right? So everybody wants to go in the herd. So if you are in the herd, you miss to see the other opportunities out there. So first, you need to stand out and be bold. Okay. The future of scientific discoveries is in your contributions. So stand out, be bold, and be the change you wish to see in this world. Thank you.